Good morning. It is your boy, Jake Goble, back at it again for Not Many Noble. Reading the Bible through in 22 with you. It is December 4th already, right? Already. So what is December 4th? It is the 338th day that we have been reading the Bible together. But it's so much more than that, right? It is National Cookie Day, Cabernet Franc Day, Franc Day, I don't know, Chester Greenwood Day, Earmuff Day, I guess, or I guess that's one and the same thing, Global Fat Bike Day, I thought that was yesterday. Anyways, Extraordinary Work Team Recognition Day, National Dice Day, International Cheetah Day, National Sock Day, and Santa's List Day. A lot of things going on today. What do we got going on? Well, we are reading the Bible through in chronological order. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. If not, welcome back. We began in Genesis and we are now in Acts. Paul was uh, attacked in Jerusalem, rescued by the the Romans, I guess, but he was still imprisoned, but not imprisoned, held, detained. And then the Jews were going to kill him. So he was sent to Festus, the governor, to await accusation from his accusers. (laughs) After five days, this is after he's already been sent to the governor, the high priest Ananias came down with certain elders and an orator, one Tertullus. They informed the governor against Paul. When he was called, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, seeing that by you we enjoy much peace. And that prosperity is coming to this nation by your foresight. We accept it in all ways and in all places, most excellent Felix, with all thankfulness. But that I don't delay you, I entreat you to bear with us and hear a few words. For we have found this man to be a plague, an instigator of insurrections among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, and we arrested him. By examining him him yourself, you may ascertain all these things of which we accuse him. The Jews also joined in the attack, affirming that these things were so. When the governor had beckoned to him to speak, Paul answered, Because I know that you have been a judge of this nation for many years, I cheerfully make my defense, seeing that you can verify that it is not more than twelve days since I went up to worship at Jerusalem. In the temple they didn't find me disputing with anyone or stirring up a crowd, either in the synagogues or in the city nor can they prove to you the things of which they now accuse me. But this I confess to you all, or this I confess to you, that after the way, which they call a sect, so I serve the God of our fathers, believing all things which are according to the law and which are written in the prophets, having hope toward God, which these also look, or these also themselves look for, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. And this I also practice, always having a conscience void of offense toward God and men. Now after some years, I came to bring gifts for the needy to my nation and offerings, amid which certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, not with a mob, nor with turmoil. They ought to have been here before you, and to make accusation if they had anything against me, or else let these men themselves say what injustice they found in me when I stood before the council." Unless it is unless it is for this one thing that I cried standing among them concerning the resurrection of the dead, I am being judged before you today. But Felix, having more exact knowledge concerning the way, deferred them, saying, When Lysias, the commanding officer, comes down, I will decide your case. So we ordered the centurion that Paul should be kept in custody and should have some privileges and not to forbid any of his friends to serve him or to visit him. But after some days, Felix came with Drusilla, his wife who was a Jewess, and sent for Paul, and heard him concerning the faith in Christ Jesus. As he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was terrified and answered, Go your way for this time, and when it is convenient for me, I will summon you. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given to him by Paul, that he might release him. Therefore also he sent for him more often and talked with him. But when two years were fulfilled, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus, Desire, and desiring to gain favor with the Jews, Felix left Paul in bonds. Festus, therefore, having come into the province, after three days went up to Jerusalem from Caesarea. Then the high priest and the principal men of the Jews informed him against Paul, and they begged him, asking a favor against him, that he would summon him to Jerusalem 
plotting to kill him on the way. However, Festus answered that Paul should be kept in custody at Caesarea and that he himself was about to depart shortly. Let them therefore, he said, that are in power among you go down with me, and if there is anything wrong in the man, let them accuse him. When he had stayed among them more than ten days, he went down to Caesarea, and on the next day he sat on the judgment seat and commanded Paul to be brought. When he had come, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood around him, bringing against him many and grievous charges which they could not prove. While he said in his defense, neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar have I sinned at all. But Festus, desiring to gain favor with the Jews, answered Paul and said, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and be judged by me there concerning these things? But Paul said, I am standing before Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be tried. I have done no wrong to the Jews, as you also well know very well. For if I have done wrong and have committed anything worthy of death, I don't refuse to die. But if none of these things is true that they accuse me of, no one can give me up to them. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, You have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you shall go. Now when some days had passed, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea and greeted Festus. As he stayed there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a certain man left a prisoner by Felix about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, asking for a sentence against him. I answered them that it is not the custom of the Romans to give up any man to destruction before the accused has met the accusers face to face and has that opportunity to make his defense concerning the matter laid against him. When therefore they had come together here, I didn't delay, but on the next day I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought up. When the accusers stood up, they brought no charges against him of such things as I supposed but had certain questions against him about their own religion, about one Jesus, who was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. Being perplexed how to inquire concerning these things, I asked whether he was willing to go to Jerusalem and there be judged concerning these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be kept for the decision of the emperor, I commanded him to be kept until I could send him to Caesar. Agrippa said to Festus, I also would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you shall hear him. So on the next day, when Agrippa and Bernice had come with great pomp, and they had entered into the place of hearing with the commanding officers and the principal men of the city, at the command of Festus, Paul was brought in. Festus said, King Agrippa and all men who are present with us, or here present with us, you see this man about whom all the multitude of the Jews petitioned me, both at Jerusalem and here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and as he himself appealed to the emperor, I determined to send him of whom I have no certain thing to write to my Lord. Therefore I have brought him out before you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, that after examination I may have something to write, for it seems to me unreasonable in sending a prisoner not to also specify the charges against him. <clears throat> Which makes sense. What's he accused of? What? Uh, how are we li hearing this appeal? Well, I don't know exactly what he was accused of. <laughs> he, got, he got nothing. I got nothing. Agrippa said to Paul, you may speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, that I am to make my defense before you today concerning all the things that I am accused by the Jews, especially because you are expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. Indeed, all the Jews know my way of life from my youth up, which was from the beginning among my own nation and at Jerusalem, having known me from the first, if they are willing to testify that after the strictest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Now I stand here to be judged for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers, which our twelve tribes, earnestly serving night and day, hope to attain. Concerning this hope, I am accused by the Jews, King Agrippa. Why is it judged incredible with you if God does raise the dead? I myself most certainly thought that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I also did this in Jerusalem. I both shut up many of the saints in prisons, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death I gave my vote against them. Punishing them often in all the synagogues, I tried to make them blaspheme. Being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. Whereupon, as I traveled to Damascus with the authority and commission from the chief priests at noon, O king, I saw on the way a light from the sky, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who traveled with me. When we had all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. I said, Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But arise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you 
a servant and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will reveal to you, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles to whom I send you, to open their eyes that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive remission of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to them of Damascus at Jerusalem and throughout all the country of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, doing works worthy of repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Therefore, having therefore obtained the help that is from God, I stand to this very day, testifying both to small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would happen how the Christ must suffer, and how by the resurrection of the dead he would be first to proclaim light both to these people and to the Gentiles. As he thus made his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are crazy. Your learning is driving you insane. But he said, I am not crazy, most excellent Festus, but boldly declare words of truth and reasonableness. For the king knows of these things, to whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things is hidden from him, for this has not been done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. Agrippa said to Paul, with a little persuasion, are you trying to make me a Christian? Paul said, I pray to God that whether with little or with much, but not only you, but also all that hear me today might become such as I am, except for these bonds. The king rose up with the governor and Bernice and those who had sat with them. When they had withdrawn, they spoke to one another, saying, This man does nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Agrippa said to Festus, This might have been set free. This man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. So I've always thought to myself when I read that section, like, Oh, you appealed to Caesar. Maybe you shouldn't have done that. But that was not Paul's goal. Paul wasn't trying to get free. Paul was trying to obey Christ. Remember, he had a, a, a vision he, and he was supposed to go to Rome. He's going to bring the gospel to Rome. And that's what Paul was doing. That's what he was about. So his appeal to Caesar takes him closer to his mission. His mission is not to get free of the bonds. His mission was not to not be a prisoner anymore or he would have, right? I mean, when we think back in Acts, we see Peter being imprisoned and miraculously freed. That was not the point. It's not the point. So it's not like, oh man, Paul, you done messed up. No, that wasn't the point. That's not what Paul was trying to do. That's not what he was aiming for. So, all right, let's pray real quick and let's get out of here. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for um, this account of Paul. And I pray that we would have the same boldness to speak the truth to those in power and also to be reconciled to the purpose that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for listening. Show notes are at notmanynoble.com. You can get a hold of me, notmanynoble at gmail.com. And I will catch y'all tomorrow. Peace. Peace.